Welcome back to TEC Tube. I'm Vince Sylvester, and once again, I got Ryan Hoger back with me. Today, we are going to be talking about the secret settings inside the core and the housewife stat. Ryan, is there anything else that we could discover with this thing? Oh, this stat does a lot of stuff, Vince, uh, and helps save people a lot of energy, but you got to configure it correctly. You're going to show us how? Today, we're going to do that. Excellent. So we're gonna go through each screen on here one by one and do the setup stuff. We're gonna skip the main user settings and just go into the stuff that's more service orientated. There's three different screens that we'll probably be looking at. So I'm gonna go into menu. I'm gonna skip profiles and schedules and vacation because those are consumer related settings. I'm gonna go into settings, alerts, system and service today and show you what those do. So four different screens. So under settings, we'll just do them in a row so we don't get lost. Register my thermostat. I've already done that in a previous video. You've seen that. Preferences is the next one. Thermostat name, I could change that here if I wanted to. I'm gonna leave it at my home, which is what I picked during setup. Default touch and go time. So here I got four different choices on what I can work with. Um, when I go up to my thermostat and I press a button to override the temperature, I can have it do one of four different things. I can have it hold it until a certain time of day. I can have it hold it forever, the traditional hold. I can have it hold it until the next scheduled event or I can have it ask me which of those three I want to do every single time I do it. All right, so the default on here is hold it until my next scheduled event, which is fine, or I can make it any one of these ones just by clicking on it. So I'll hit, I'm gonna hit cancel and just go back here. Screen brightness, this is a consumer preference thing. We don't really need to talk about it much there other than a couple different things. There's one brightness for when it's being used, one brightness for when it's in kind of sleep mode when you're not really using it. So usually it's a little bit dimmed down until you walk up to it. And then when I'm sleeping, if I want, I could turn the display off completely. Some people have these in their master bedrooms and they don't want to have any light shining in there. So they want to have it go completely black at night. So you can do that if you want to. The next one below that, activate to standby timer. So how many seconds before the screen goes to sleep after I stop using it? 60 seconds is the default and that's fine. I can scroll down here. Temperature display, that's Fahrenheit and Celsius. We did that during the basic config. Heat set point range. So what is the lowest heating set point I ever wanted to use and the highest heating set point I ever wanted to use? 1580, as you can see here, are the defaults. Maybe I want to bump that up to something else, maybe 55. Maybe I never want my family to be able to raise it above 75 or 72 or whatever it's going to be. So I can put those in and now the user cannot go above or below that range. Hit save. Same thing on the cooling side. What's the lowest you ever want it to go? Maybe 70. And on the highest, maybe 85, I don't know. And hit save, whatever you want there. Heating smart setback. Uh, there's a heating smart setback and a cooling smart setback and they work in a similar way. This is a pretty interesting feature and it's one of the things that's unique about this stat. Only the Bryant Housewise Carrier Core as well as the Bryant and Carrier Infinity and Evolution stats do this. I'm not aware of any other stats that have this kind of feature. So what this smart setback does, it's especially useful on multi-stage equipment. It takes advantage of the fact when you're in the away mode, when you're not home at all, that we don't necessarily have to maintain the set points that you asked for. So for example, in the heating mode, let's suppose you told the thermostat you want it to be 60 degrees when you're away to save energy. Traditionally, we let it go back to 60 degrees, we save a bunch of energy, everybody's good, we get back to our occupied time, we blast the heat full capacity, and we get us back up to 70 or whatever we normally like. And that's worked really well for years to save a lot of energy. However, now that we have multi-stage equipment, we need to recognize that the efficiency of the equipment is not the same efficiency when it's on first stage versus when it's on second stage. The highest number of stages is the least efficient operating point for the equipment. So in other words, I want to avoid high fire on my furnace. I want to avoid high capacity on my air conditioner. If I can keep my furnace on the lower stages, it is actually more efficient than if I have to run it at full capacity. So what this thermostat does is it takes that into account it knows how long it takes to heat up and cool down your house from previous data run history that it's had on your own house. And it says, you know what? I know you asked me for 60 degrees when you're not home, but I'm gonna to calculate today based on the current outdoor air temperature, the current indoor temperature, and how hard it is for me to heat and cool your house at those typical temperatures. I'm gonna maintain 65 degrees or 66 or 67 or 62 or whatever I calculate, whatever the thermostat calculates. So that way when we come out of setback, we don't have to go to high fire. We can get it done with one stage. The longer your setback range is, 
the more advantageous this feature will be. If you're only going to set back for an hour in the away mode, it's not a big deal. But the more hours you have away from your house, the more it's going to play with your set points for you and save you energy. If you don't like that feature and your customer finds it annoying, this is where you can disable it. However, I would say leave it on if you, if you would, and it'll help them save more energy. It's extremely useful on people that have heat pumps because the heat pump in the compressor operating mode is probably two, three, four hundred percent efficient depending on the outdoor air temperature versus the backup electric heat is only 100 percent efficient. So I'd rather have that on. I'm going to go back on this case. When I scroll down, cooling smart setback works the exact same way, but in cooling mode. So I don't need to explain that one to you. So I'm going to go ahead and go back out of here. Um, that was the preferences. Access control is an interesting one. You can enable this. And if you do, it'll ask you for a four digit password and you can lock this thermostat. You can either lock it out completely. You can lock it so people can only change settings, so they can only change schedules, so they can only change vacation mode. But if you got kids that are playing with it or you wanna put this in some public accessible area for some reason, um, like today we have it on the wall in the classroom. If we had this here, we would lock it out so random people couldn't come adjust the set point. If you do this, just make sure you remember your password, obviously. If you forget it, you can re reset it from the web browser. I'm gonna go ahead and go back in this case. Wi-Fi, we already did that during the basic setup, so we don't need to talk about that today. Time and location, same thing, we already did that. Um, you can set your display format if you wanna go military time instead of, 20, or instead of 12 hour clock, you can change that. And then the time zone we already picked earlier at Chicago. Um, reset is the last one. I'm not gonna click that now because I don't wanna reset it. But if I hit reset, it basically wipes this stat out back to the factory beginning like you're putting it on the wall brand new, right? So most homeowners would never use that or contractors. I use it all the time here in the lab because we reprogram the stat over and over and over again because we like doing stuff like that. All right, so that was all the settings screen there. Uh, next, I'm gonna look at the alerts screen with you guys. Uh, there's a couple different things going on here. There's an inbox for any alert messages that I have. I don't have any now because my stat's brand new. Same with reminders like filter changes and stuff like that, but I don't have any yet. Um, preferences is where I want to go to set a few different things up here. So display alerts or reminders on my thermostat. Normally I'd want that, but if for some reason your customer finds that annoying, you could disable that, but you normally you would leave that on. Service reminder. When do you want to next service this system? If I installed this system in, well, this is June right now, if I installed it in June, maybe I need to come back in October, for example, and do a heating safety check, right? So I would say June, July, August, September, October, four months from now, I want to come back in here and do maintenance for them for before the fall season begins. So you can do stuff like that and they'll automatically get a reminder to have their system serviced. Very much like the maintenance reminder on your vehicle. Filter reminder, I can either do that in terms of months or in hours of runtime of fan operation. So months is what it's defaulted on, I could change that or I could switch it over to hours and I could change the number of hours of fan runtime. And then it will give me a reminder to change my filter after that much. Heating cooling alerts. Do you want them, yes or no, enable it. And then when you scroll down, you have several different ones you can work with. High temp, low temp, high humidity, and low humidity. So if I pick high temp, what's the absolute highest temperature I ever wanna see? So let's say my stat was um, gonna maintain whatever, 75 degrees for cooling, but when I'm not home, it's gonna maintain 80. So then maybe at 85, I might wanna set an alarm. If it's never supposed to be above 80 in my house, and for some reason it gets up to 85, that's my oh crap point. I need to be notified about that, especially if this is a vacation home or I'm a snowbird or I travel a lot, those kind of things, this is especially useful. Same thing on the low temp side for heating. If you want to turn it on, what's the lowest you ever want to get it to? As a general rule, I'd say keep it five degrees further than whatever your furthest set point is going to be on your schedules, right? So a lot of mine are set for 85 on the cooling side and 55 on the heating side for my alarm points. Humidity, high humidity alert. If you want to turn that on, that's a good idea. This stat will actively control humidity and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's say, for example, I might want to have a 65% alarm. I'm normally going to want to try to maintain like 55% in the summer. So if I get up to 65%, I'm, I'm good with getting an alarm at that point. And then the low humidity alert, likewise. Um, usually I set those for 10%. And generally I do it whether the consumer has a humidifier or not. Obviously, if they have a humidifier and we get down to 10%, that means their humidifier is not operating correctly and there's a problem. But even if they don't have a humidifier, I want them to be notified about it because they probably need to consider getting one. So I'd turn this feature on, 
If they get an alarm, great, they need to buy a humidifier. If they choose not to buy one, then we can shut the alarm off at that point. Now scroll down just to the last one here. Humidifier pad reminder. Once again, you could do it months or hours of operation. Either way is fine. And then for the UV lamp reminder, I can do it for months or hours of operation. Generally for UV lights, you would do monthly. So 12 months, you might get a new bulb. So I'm gonna back out of there. That was all the preference screens under the alerts reminder section. Two other sections, one's quick, one's a little bit longer. So under system, it tells me my operating mode. This is the same information that's available to me on the face of the thermostat. So I can change modes from heating and cooling off on here. No big deal. Fan mode, same thing. I can do that from the face of the thermostat or I can do it here, auto or on. On obviously means the fan runs continuously. And humidifier, I could turn my humidifier off from here if I don't want to use it. All right, go back a little bit. All right, the very last one is the service button. If I just press the service button, I have two menu choices on there. One is about my thermostat. It gives me basic information on my stat, model number, serial number, software version, who to call for help, and stuff like that. Service information is right below that. That's the name of my heating and cooling contractor. By default, it's going to say Bryant or Carrier and have their 800 numbers. However, in the service setup, you'll see in a minute, you can change that to make that your contractor info so the customer calls you instead of the manufacturer if they need help. I'm going to go ahead and press back and go back one more time. All right, so I have about thermostat, edit my service information. So I can click on that and I can come in here and type in whatever I want my information to be using the keypad. I'm just going to leave this one as the Bryant info, but you can type in your name, your phone, your email, and your website. On the email, whatever email you type in here, that email is going to get carbon copied on any email alarms the customer gets. So if they get alarms for high temp, low humidity, high humidity, all that kind of stuff, this dealer email address will get a copy of those exact same alarms. So choose wisely when you put your email address in there. Installation settings, our last section all together here. There's three different pieces to that, equipment setup, operating thresholds, and test equipment. Under equipment setup, we got a few different things. I had chosen to set this particular one up for a two-stage system for AC and furnace because you get to see more screens when you do that, and I wanted you guys to see as much as possible today. So I have the ability to lock out cooling whenever the air temp is below 55 degrees. So in most cases, you don't want your cooling equipment running when it's cold outside unless you have a low ambient system, which most people don't. So I would probably want that enabled and go ahead and lock out my cooling when it's below 55 degrees outside. Um, under the furnace, there's nothing to change. It's just two stages. That's the way it is there. Humidifier, I have a few settings I can change. I can change the type from evaporative to steam if I happen to have a steam system. Um, um, hum humidity on heating only, yes or no. So this prevents the humidifier from running without a call for heat. So traditionally with the humidifiers for decades, we've waited until there's a heat call, then we enable the humidifier. We do that because high temperature air has the ability to hold more moisture than low temperature air. So as I'm injecting this moisture into the air, the air can absorb it if the air happens to be warmer. So we wait for a heating call. However, in the case of some systems, like a steam humidifier, we already have pretty hot. Um, moisture, so we necessarily don't need to wait for a heating call. Plus, steam systems are generally installed on homes that need more moisture to begin with. So whether it's steam or pad humidifier evaporative, you can choose to use this feature to add more humidity to the house and not wait for a heating call. Minimum run delta time, 5%. So this is uh, used to reduce short cycling on the humidifier. I wouldn't change that from 5%. If you want, you can make it a little bit higher, but I wouldn't go less than 5%. Window efficiency. So in this case, uh, one means I have pretty poor windows. Uh, seven means I have good R value on my windows. So I can go anywhere from one to seven. Um, two was the default in this case. If you have single pane windows, that's probably a good place to pick. If you have double pane windows, you might want to pick three, four, five, something in that range. Um, what this does is when we have the humidifier set up, it's going to track the outdoor air temperature and use that to stage the humidifier to a lower set point to prevent condensation on the windows. The condensation is a function of three different variables. How humid is it in my house? How cold is the surface temperature on the inside of the glass? Right? So how, and that's based on two different things, which, which well, let's say it that way. Um, the insulation of value of the glass, so how many panes do I have, and the outdoor air temperature. So inside humidity, how good is my window? How cold is it outside?
I can view my wiring setup, which I did during the initial setup, but I can look at it here if I wanted to. I can scroll down here, reconfigure the actual equipment if I needed to.